Today, we are going to talk about the content poll strategy. And uh, that's just a little play on words. It's actually tech poll strategy. And um, it's something that comes out of Hollywood around how they market their, their uh, movies. In broadcast in pictures, a tent pole or tent pole is a program or movie that supports the financial performance of a movie studio or a television network. A tent pole may be expected to support the sale of tie-in merchandise. So, um, uh, Star Wars is a great tent pole movie. Uh, Disney buys Star Wars, they pour a lot of marketing dollars into and and production dollars into making that that movie um, every year now and then from that tent pole they will sell merchandise but also they will use that the income from that movie and from that merchandise to fund the rest and the rest of the movies that they make which may or may not have as much pull and 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 produces much revenue for for them what and you say well yeah it's a blockbuster movie it makes sense you know that it would be the biggest movie but my but the strategy uh from a studio standpoint it, those tentpole type of movies because they have a budget that they work within even though sometimes with these multi-million dollar blockbusters it doesn't seem like they do but have a budget that they have to, to use and if it's you know over the course of a year let's say it's a, a billion dollars um that would probably be enough money to make for very good tentpole movies right and then you've run out of uh cash and so if a studio uh, or block studio has a billion dollars to spend that year but they've got 25 movies to make or, or a dozen movies, say one a month is gonna roll out of their studio, based on you know, opportunities to make movies, that's what they do, that's what they wanna do, and that's where the money comes in. They can't put the same amount of resources into absolutely every single movie. And of course, they're putting out, out far more movies a year. Um, so what they do is they identify the movies that are very powerful, that have the greatest mass appeal, and they put a bulk, the bulk of their resources Sources movies, and then across the board of all the other movies, they just limit uh, the type of movies that they make, which could limit the amount of uh, funds they need to spend on the movie. And um, that allows these big blockbuster movies to truly be blockbuster. Allows them to get the best talent, um, acting talent, directing talent, talent production. It allows them to. Uh, do more merchandising, which is a big piece. In fact, most tentpole movies at the box office, most of them, fail, and that's that's on purpose because they put so much into just creating such an amazing movie that it draws everybody into it. And then beyond that is uh, uh, spending their dollars on the merchandising, buying their hamburgers at the hamburger joint that decides to partner with the movie. <clears throat> and, you know, this is a lot like having a content hub. It, it's the idea of putting a resource or putting a, something valuable um, in one place that creates inter, uh, synergy, that creates interest uh, and and ties people together uh, around the, around that big blockbuster. They can take the influence of it and move it elsewhere to support uh, the financial support of all their other movies. And this, this comes from, it really came from doing um, and, and looking at how the money was getting spent and they discovered that the bulk of, the, of, of their income income um, uh, when they concentrate their resources on one particular movie of a certain flavor, etc., depending on the star, depending on the type of movie. And then across all the other movies, they don't have to utilize the expense of CGI and, you know, flying acrobats. Maybe they do uh, good heartfelt movies, movies that just require a location <clears throat> and a few actors and not so much uh, the support of all the extra whiz-bang that can go into movies. So, 
that and it works very uh, productively uh, for a studio. It also, um, believe it or not, it helps them mitigate their risk a little plan to possibly lose out on a blockbuster movie but with the ability <clears throat> to target exactly what is going to because there's formulas you know for a movie you can you can write a formula for a single movie put a lot of cool graphics in it and put it out there and it's going to do what it's intended to do it's going to not just make to make and in, create interest and create <clears throat> engagement and and that's 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 the whole that's the whole uh, ball of wax right there once people people are in, and identifying with those characters then they can merchandise them so so it helps them mitigate that risk instead of trying to do this across a bunch of different uh, formulas they works well and that draws attention that allows them to merchandise which in turn allows them to fund all the other movies that they make so that's what a temple strength. And we want to apply that to content because there is power in this approach. Again, you know, this is called 4D leverage. And the idea behind 4D is that you are, are taking a greater uh, look at whatever it is that you're doing, right? 3D allows you to see the infrastructure, the left, the right, the top, the bottom. But when you go 4 you begin to include the inner um, the inner person or or and you start to apply different ways of looking at and and um, leveraging things right well content we see content kind of in this lens because content isn't just what you're looking at um, even what we're doing right now, we're creating content. This is just a small piece. If you've never heard this video before, then you have no idea who I am or what I am. But over time, if you recognize uh, us throughout the web and you have run into us uh, via various types of content, it starts to frame an image. And that's, that's, what we're doing here is we are going to with our with content we know that we're framing an image in people's minds but what happens if you frame an image in somebody's mind and then you keep framing that same image over and over and over and you don't vary it up it, it gets stale even though it may burn that idea in when it comes to content because people have to actively and cognitively consume it if it's not fresh all the time, if it's not exciting, if they can't see through the content and into your business and see something, which by the way, they, every time content goes across the eyes of your prospects, they see deep into your business and they can tell uh, what level of quality you're, you're possessing. They can tell even your personality and things about the business based on the type of words that are used and just the type of content. So, so, so influence that we're wanting to, to, to have forces us to be creative, forces us to think about different types of content to put out there. And so you'll see companies doing this and you'll see them sharing um, things that don't seem like they're a hundred percent, you know, in line with what they are as a company and maybe not even talking about the company itself and what they're doing or should be doing. They're using this tentpole philosophy around that content because that's the content that is fresh and different and exciting. And it's the kind of content that is more, uh, more, <clears throat> more likely to share something that's built for a uh, viral Sharing, I'm, I'm more likely to share the silly cat video, right? Then, unnecessary video. Uh, typically, stuff about a company is more for me to understand rather than for me to pass it around. So, you find that your content is very difficult to move around. But what we do is kind of play a shell game, uh, where or however you want to look at it, uh, this this other content becomes a uh, kind of a straw man for your business content the, the the informational stuff that you want to get out there to convert into sales so what we do in this strategy I in what I call pleasure content that can go viral it gets likes drives quality engagement and and then we mix that with your business content and so we put maximum of this tentpole content because it has the highest chance of impressing the search engines um, 
so so let's we're we're not going to tie this together too uh, specifically, but but let's say that you're putting out on a monthly basis 500 pieces of content. Okay, they they may be the same message, just purposed in different ways, but you have 500 pieces of content going out across um, various digital channels, and someone who comes comes across your because they're looking for your product let's say you're selling shoes they're looking for shoes they come across your content they find out something cool about shoes from you and they you know maybe you talk about maybe maybe you maybe you talk about uh, the the materials you use maybe it's just straight up ad whatever they come across they come across that if after they see it a few times that information just that content they, they know basically what you're going to say, even if you say it 10 different ways, they get the idea. And on the web, people are, you know, it's one by. So we create some pleasure content that we brand because we still want to connect uh, it with us. And we put that pleasure content out there, that viral, possibly viral type of content into the same digital channels, but they stumble across that. Imagine if you're a shoe sales uh, uh, or a shoe producer, <clears throat> a produ uh, you make shoes, and you're selling shoes across the web, and you're putting out content about the shoes all the time, and then you decide, you know what, let's capitalize, here we are in a couple weeks, um, let's capitalize either on an event or around just a, a, a like, a, a similar type of, um, uh, of product. Or, or, or something that's related to our product. So in this case, let's capitalize on the Super Bowl. Let's capitalize on football. And let's put content out that people get excited about that has nothing to do with shoes. It just has to do with something related to our content. Yeah. I'll talk more about this here in a second, so I won't belabor the point too much. But as so, from that point, you could very simply get. Um, uh, football pictures, maybe you have connections to football players and stars. Maybe you decide, hey, let's go talk to some Pop Warner teams and write some great stories about kids played football and got into college as a result. I mean, you could just start building the stories, building uh, the different uh, ways to approach it and create a campaign that's all around uh, Pop Warner football and people that went to college. That's something that people would find interesting. They would share it. They'd say, hey, check this out. This is cool, et cetera. More, more so than an aware type of piece of content, right? So, so th there's three approaches to content that you can take in this framework that will allow you to create them in order to make this strategy work. So you have your applicable content, I call it, free features and benefits, product, service, whatever. This is the content that you have and putting out so that people will, will, will discover your brand and discover who you are. Then there's trending content. So Super Bowl's coming up like to create trending content, talking about the Super Bowl. Maybe we give our picks and, and our uh, approach to the different players, et cetera, and that too could, could – could actually be content, but but let's say you're putting out 30% um, of your content is, is actually about your product, and 10% uh, or less than that is about trending content. So whatever the holiday that's coming up, whatever the sporting event, maybe something happens in the news, politics, whatever, you are putting out content that just, and then there's that tentpole content. That content that speaks to an interest as opposed to the product itself. The goal here is to put applicable and necessary content in the most efficient manner as possible, right? So we, we, we don't just want to produce content. We want to produce good content, necessary content, but we want to make sure that we produce it in an efficient manner. And if you're sending out content about shoes, even though you're changing your perspective on it on a regular basis, but you're putting so much into that, that there's only a certain level of saturation that you're getting and all the, the rest of your energy is kind of going to waste. The rest of that content is just kind of missing the boat. 
you might find that by scaling some of that back and then putting those resources towards um, uh, uh, some tent pole content might give you more traction because that those are going to get more more engagement and you're going to get uh, Google's going to see that you're getting more backlinks and more shares and, and more engagement on the content more people talking about it etc and into them they, they will um, um, interpret that to be um, the same as if they had if they had converted uh, shared or whatever any of your tent type type of content any of your product content now um, and, and then number two, to find the most efficient way to stay up on top of trends to produce content and for. So, so <clears throat> you want to find a great way in order to keep track of the trends that you're going to produce that kind of content for. That, that's, that's, that can be a daily thing. That can be a monthly thing. There's lots of software and play, ways to do that. But what really matters here is a strategy um, on how you are going to just engage with media in general in order to understand and know what's the most trending thing, whether you're checking it out on Twitter, uh, uh, another uh, uh, platform, or or whether it's just coming across the TV or in, in your own being tuned into your market, that 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 ability to know what those trends are is uh, and, and when to actually put that content out is key to taking advantage of trending content. And then to maximize the tentpole content um, in time, quality, and budget is another goal. And, and across this entire this entire landscape of these, these three approaches, it all has to synthesize and it has to get out in a timely and an efficient manner so that it, it works for people, so that they don't just see know your your sports stories but that they also see the other product uh, content at this at the same time in that same uh, environment that they are in or on that same digital channel etc so so what makes good tent pole content and how does it differ from the other types of content well tent pole content specifically is emotionally sensually and cognitively appealing engaging and amazing right it's the kind of content that you look at it and you go, wow, that just grips me. And it, uh, when, when you're mingling the product, like on a television commercial, you have to mingle the product with the superstar, right? And the story and, and whatever, whatever, the, um, whatever the, the theme is or the, the way you frame that particular ad. You have to mingle the two together. But, <clears throat> but with content marketing, it's cool because you can split them apart. You can, in one channel, you can have specifically, uh, or, or one release of, of content, you can specifically be talking about the shoe, whereas in another uh, stream or another campaign, you can talk about, like I said, telling the story of uh, football players that go that go go to college because of football, or maybe just you're putting out fun uh, fuzzy cat videos, right? Uh, uh, casinos like to do this. They like to buy up um, all the weird stuff in the world and then put out content and point people to that weird stuff. You know, um, uh, the man with six fingers, right? <laughs> um, Prince's Bride just played at the local theater here. But, uh, that movie's in my head. But um, th they would buy up uh, opportunities to to interview that guy and talk to that person with six fingers. Um, I, I've seen some some pretty wild stuff that they buy. They bought the uh, they bought the um, potato chip that the Dorito that had a uh, mother Teresa, and they did that so that they could put it on their website and create content and drive people's interest to it. And all that did was create awareness for the casino um, when. And they did that Why? because that was just something that engaged people. It got people. It, it made sense to them. And they knew that those same people would be uh, potential gamblers, potential casino people that would come to a casino. And that kind of approach works. So it has to be really the, the it's the cute kitty syndrome kind of content that you put out um, in this tentpole content. Now, it may be story related. It may be even more serious um, depending on the product and depending on what it is that you're trying to accomplish, but engaging. It has to be emotional and it has to really come across in a viral manner and follow some of those common viral rules. So there are different 
types of content. You think to yourself, all right, well, I'm business and this is what we do. What kind of content would I put out there would complement what we do? Here's some ideas. I'm sure there's plenty more, but one one is to find interest amongst your customer base. Segment your customer by their customers by their personal interests. And you know, if if you're a uh, let's say you're a golf store, you you know that golf is your primary. Um, you know that's one of their primary interests. But what does that lend itself to? Well, a lot of golfers are executives, right? Because there does have to be the ability to afford both in time and money the opportunity to play golf. So. Maybe you put out, if you're a golf store, maybe you put out uh, how uh, the, the, you put out some content about how executives manage their time. And these executives discover that you are uh, engaging them on something that they need. And all of a sudden, oh, this is a golf store. Wow, I live near that golf store or whatever the case. They may not have known that you exist. And now that they, now they know that you exist. So segmenting your customers, you will also learn about bit about them um, and, and how to speak to them when you start to recognize their personal interests that they share amongst themselves. And you can get as granular as you want to to make this happen with surveys and uh, customer uh, um, customer surveys and asking your, your customers as they come in and out of the store. You can get, you know, ask them straight yeah, what interacting with them in sales, etc., so that you have a good feel for their personal interest. Common products, um, discover common products that are used by your market. So, so sticking with the golf store, what would be some common products that have nothing to do with golf but still might interest them? And we could go back to shoes, right? You may carry shoes, you may not carry shoes uh, in your golf. Let's say you don't carry anything other than golf shoes, but you could still do. Um, some content about running shoes, about about different types of shoes. If you found that there was commonality between golfers, how about walking shoes, right? Most, a lot of golfers are, are, are uh, um, older and a lot of people like to walk exercise as opposed to um, doing a full-on workout or whatever the case may be. And you find out that, yes, most golfers, 80% of the golfers also buy, you know, you know, walking shoes. Well, you can put content out there about walking, walking, walking sticks, trails, uh, um, places to go walk, neat things to see when you're walking, and do an entire entire content campaign around walking, really targeting people that walk but are also golfers. Um, and then common attributes. Look for things that are that are common between them in the physical, spiritual, or sense attributes. So, what do these people, you know, all look like? If we stick with the golf. The, 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 the golfers, there, there may be a trend of all golfers. I don't know what the golfer is or average weight or body build or whatever the case may be, but finding out, say basketball, let's say you owned a sports store and you discovered that, you know, you sell a lot of basketball. Well, that's pretty obvious. A lot of these people are tall. So, so maybe you create some content that is around big and tall uh, type of people and, and speaks to them how to play when you're over uh, six five. Uh, how how you how not to have your knees hurt, right? When it when 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 you're a very large person, whatever the case may be, those common attributes can make for that good con content. But you'll notice the common word in all of those is common. You want to segment your customer base and find elements uh, that that you can talk to because that is stuff that they're going to engage with and they're going to share and most other people on. Now, a golf store is kind of a crazy idea, a crazy, crazy example, because most people, man, you just talk about golf, and they're in it. You know, if you like golf, you like golf. But uh, any sport. Uh, tent pole, call to action, is, is the key here. When, when you have tent pole content, the call to action is your product. You can't put out a silly kitty video and then push them over to you know your um, uh, your 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 torsion uh, sensing device that goes on uh, jumbo jets, right? That's your product, and uh, the kitty <laughs> somebody looks at that and doesn't make any sense. But what you can do <clears throat> is you can take that content and the call to action in there can push them to other content. It can push them to content that is more in line or specifically in line with your 
brand. Why? Not because everybody that sees your kitty video wants to go buy whatever it is you're, you're selling, but if your brand is attached to this tent pole, kind of content and somebody sees it and goes hey I know that brand because they're in that industry then you very well could be reminding them they could click on it and end up on your page and then go oh yeah this is applicable to me this is this looks good um, and what so what you're doing there is your <clears throat> with the tentpole content you're putting out viral content that gets you some Google juice and gets you some 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 search engine ranking and and ranking within um, that particular platform as well and you're getting the benefits of that but you're only going to appeal to the person that cares about your product because in your description you may say yeah this was my cat and she did about for the off of the couch and loves to do them every night at 6 p.m. not something that we would allow at such and such a company um, from our employees, but at home, this is great. You know, there's ways to tie that in. Uh, and they would click from that and go over to a piece of content that, that talks about your product uh, from, from, from that one. The people that are viewing that content, they will be, view both, they will view Fun content, but they'll also view serious stuff, right? When they engage with your fun content and then recognize who you are or what you really do, there actually is a curiosity that comes to play in their mind. Because they see you take this drastic approach, yet they also recognize, you know, this guy just put out this funny cat video, but but they make this high-tech product that only goes into, you know, like I said, something that goes into commercial aircrafts or aircraft or something. What What is the, what is the, you know, what's going on here? Their minds will create a contrast, and that contrast, it, it is the message in a way that has no words that you can put to it. It just creates that curiosity. So, so by taking your tentpole um, uh, content, creating a, how do I want to put it, creating um, a contrast with what it is that you're doing, first of all, can lend you to what type of content you're going to do your tentpole campaign, but it also gives you this idea, uh, makes you realize that you're going to, you're going to be able to get into a place in, in, in their psyche, if you will, that before just wouldn't happen with a direct message. And so that makes this strategy very effective and engaging. What's that key? All right, but sending them from your tentpole content to business related content can drive more views on that content, which in turn higher organic search ranking for your business. And of course, that content will then have a convertible CTA attached to it. So <clears throat> if you drive them from your content, uh, uh, from the tent pole over to some content about your business, well, then that content, that business content, of course, is going to have a call to action that will them, lead them directly to a, a landing your sales funnel, whatever the case may be. And uh, this tent pole strategy is also more fun. It's more fun to execute. It adds a, a, a level of joy in creating content because you get to create campaigns that talk about all kinds of different things other than uh, the thing that you're doing day in and day out. It just makes sense that it would be a little bit more fun. Um, so anyhow, opens it up for lots of creative uh, approaches as well. Um, Mr. Key, you have a any questions or any comments that you would like to add? There is this one important point I want to drive here. This, I read a quote somewhere which said that the world right now as where we are is not very competitive at all. Uh, we, are, we are in a point in time where creating new things is what matters the most. And if we focus on creating instead of competing, we would just go so much more faster than anything that is comparable so if you know because this strategy requires thinking outside the box because by default when we talk about creating content for a business they would not even think about uh, educative content but they would end up thinking about sales content they'll think about 
content which would be in their brochures or pamphlets about their product, about their uh, service. But that is not something that is useful beyond the scope of website or beyond the scope of uh, 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 you know, direct sales materials. So for something to be usable for end users, educative content makes more sense. And right now that is percolating and more and more business owners are opting to that. But here's the challenge. Educative content has its own limitations. At one point, when someone reads a piece of information and they're looking for more and more data on it, yeah, they're going to search and more uh, more information about that is uh, consumed at that point. But there comes a time when they don't need data or information about a piece of uh, niche or, uh, or on a topic anymore. And then you are, you're, you're at a point where you cannot talk to them in any other way. You need to gather, you need to capture their attention. You need to uh, get into their way in a, in, in a, uh, through a medium, through a platform where you're not disturbing them, but you're uh, attracting them. You're, you're uh, making them notice you. You're making them uh, resonate with you. And that's what the 10 pole strategy does. It is giving you an opportunity to present yourself through different ways, through different pieces of content, which is not directly relevant to what it is that you do, but it is uh, finally connecting all the dots together. So uh, when someone looks at it on a hindsight, they can see that you've been communicating to them over a, over a period of time in different means, different ways, using different uh, concepts or related subjects, which all brings them back to who you are and who you represent as a business and the solution that you provide. So this is an art and of course there's a science part to it as well in how you optimize and how you get it out but this requires creativity and requires and good understanding of what you are doing to them how are you solving problems that they face and not just focusing on your product but focusing on the actual solution actual benefit that your business provides to them and that list of benefits this is exactly what you're trying to distribute through the strategy using different means. That's it from me. Jay. I love that. Um, I love that you're making me realize, you know, I wouldn't say realize, but I'm getting that awareness. You know, I think about how often I think of tires. I think of tires when I need tires, period in the store. I do. I go to uh, the local tire store and I say, what do you got? And I tell them the type of tire um, that I'm looking for. And I don't really care uh, what they are, if it's BF Goodrich or, or Firestone or Pirelli's. Um, I'm more about getting the specs of the tire itself that I want. Now, <clears throat> so one every two years, every three years, I think of tires for the vehicle, right? And that's the only time I really put any thought into it. But let's say Ellie, who is a tire manufacturer of a lot of high-end tires, very uh, sports types tires, uh, performance tires, as well as uh, commuter car tires, but they're known for their performance. Well, let's say they um, decided to do a campaign, a tentpole campaign, and put out a very compelling business program uh, campaign. So they're going to talk about their business, how it's structured, and they're going to talk about what works for them. And what they're basically doing is a, along the lines of, of something that I would have an interest in, right? Something that would fall in line with what I do professionally, etc. And so, so I follow, maybe I follow them for two years. Most likely when I then go into the car place and I am looking for a tire, I would say have as a Pirelli tire. What kind of Pirelli tire do you have? Would I also, maybe I would be so sold on Pirelli's uh, content around on business and how about go about doing business that I would say I'll take a Pirelli and nothing else because I know Pirelli, uh, the integrity of their company is going to allow me to, they're going to stay in behind case may be. Um, I would be more likely because they have been constantly engaging with me and adding value to my life, I'd be more likely to turn attention to them when I go to do that. So the idea is that content in this 
in this structure allows you, like you just said, to talk to your customers and with them on not only in different ways, but at different times, times when they normally would not have anything to do with you. Back to the idea that businesses are going to become and are, are becoming more entertainment hub oriented, whether that entertainment is is just mind and neutral and enjoy type of entertainment or whether it's entertainment around a game uh, it could be around a digital game it could be around a um, uh, whatever the case may be whatever it is that this is this is this is where we're headed we're headed where businesses if they want to engage with you on a regular basis and compete who are going to have their attention they're gonna to have to do something that you purposely and willfully engage with on a regular basis and entertainment is the best medium to make that happen so um i love it i and tentpole strategies are awesome to, to to organize and here's the hardest part of it all and i'll end with this it's getting to the point where you say let's say you have a uh, annual budget a hundred thousand dollar annual budget for your marketing and and, uh, for your company and you say okay I've got to uh, spread this budget out across you know the entire year and everything you're doing <clears throat> and you're used to putting 80,000 of that into very specific product uh, content right and 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 getting your your product uh, content out there more and more and more because you think every time somebody with my product that's a better opportunity for me and the hardest part is by faith being able to kind of transfer the funds over to this silly content this content um, is not specifically applicable to the sales process and there's a strategy for doing that you don't just turn around and dump it all into there you move in that um, but that's what you have to do and you have to be willing to to take some of those risks initially until you figure out exactly you know what's gonna work and it's to figure out what works on your sales content um, but once it works and you're starting to gain the benefit from it people may very well start recognizing you for or whatever that was and you know depending on your brand that may or may not be uh, your your goal but if it is um, you could you can create a, a facade or your business that just makes people remember you um, and they remember you for that story that you told uh, that you're telling on, online or, or, or whatever the, the type of content is and that's not a bad thing because they simply want to remember you I was watching uh, television my my daughter is home sick today um, um, she was laying here watching I don't remember what it was and the commercial a commercial came on and she I was in getting her suit and she said dad come come see this soul and she watches the commercial and um, it's it's an insurance commercial or whatever and all of a sudden there's this silly graphic that comes on it's almost kind of creepy because it's and it's this this little old lady riding her bicycle yelling something I forget what she says and and then it goes away and it goes back to the regular commercial and she goes that's just she's an artist she, she likes to do digital design as well as uh, painting and, and stuff so she she's always aware of what stuff looks like and she goes that was the worst thing in the world she goes who would even think to put that in their uh, in their ad and I said well the reason they do that is because even when you highly produce commercial with all the best glitz and glamour technology etc when you highly produce that commercial, it can still go gloss, go right over you after you sue. Um, and uh, so, so that's an interrupt. That's just an opportunity for for that commercial to kind of wake you up and make you go, "Whoa, what was I watching?" <laughs> like I said, I don't even know the one time, but um, um, that's what we're talking about here in in this same thing. It shocks them. It, it catches them when they're off guard, and it creates a contrast between whole content is and what you know them to be and uh, that that has its own appeal all right that's all I have uh, it's been wonderful to discuss the need anything from us you want to 
schedule a strategy call around your content marketing and your digital presence, um, you're welcome to utilize the URL on the screen to get to my calendar and we'll set something up and uh, show you how you, you, you tell us what your vision is for where you want to go and we'll, we'll tell you how we can build you a digital platform to get you there. All right, this is James Craddock and Karnika Yashwa, Mr. Key with Key Difference Media. Look forward to talking to you and seeing you next week uh, on Tuesday, 10 a.m. PST, and uh, right here on this same Zoom channel.